Hello friends, this is Sharad Sharma and we are back with another Dog Spot Live. This is our live session number 213. And it's a special session because I have the great privilege and of welcoming my old friend, Mr. Mukul Bhaid, for the first time on the Dog Spot Live. I'll introduce him in a bit, but uh, before we start the session, I want to tell my friends that it's uh, a great opportunity for people who are interested in the boxer breed, both as a pet and as a show dog, to have an interaction with Mukul. I've known Mukul for about uh, 45 years, yeah, maybe, more. maybe more, and Mukul has been uh, involved with dogs for about 50 or maybe 55 years. 47 to be precise. Okay. And um, he's had uh, more than uh, 22, 23 breeds of dogs, which he's imported, which he's bought in India, which he's bred, he's shown, he's uh, judged. And it's uh, been a long journey, which he's uh, traveled with uh, his very graceful wife, Anjali, who's also a dear friend. And together they've had uh, much success, both as exhibitors and breeders in these various breeds. And both are now international FCI judges, the only uh, husband and wife team to be on an international panel from India. It's not happened in the past, and I don't foresee it happening very soon in the future. So it's a great privilege, and thank you for accepting our invitation, Mukul. Thank you for getting me on the Dog Spot forum. And a lot of people, Mukul, as you would see, they are tuning in, and we are just waiting for the crowd to get in uh, before we start this session. But uh, for the information of all our viewers, this is a session on boxers. Boxers is a breed that is uh, in the working group as per the uh, United Kingdom Kennel Club and uh, it's a group two breed as per the FCI regulation. And uh, uh, Mr. Mukul Vaid has been one of the connoisseurs of the breed in India. Uh, he's imported quite a few dogs, uh, mostly from the United States. He's shown them extensively He's had the proud privilege of breeding some of the top winning dogs. And he's also judged uh, a lot of boxer uh, rings all over the world, in Canada, in Latin America, in uh, Oriental Asia, in Australia, New Zealand, and, and Southeast Asia, etc. And of course, boxer speciality shows in uh, India. So there's no person better equipped or better experienced to handle this than he is. So uh, let me start and dive into it straight away. Uh, Mukul, tell us, you know, there are breeds that are named after places, Labrador, or an Irish setter, right. or a Rottweiler. And then there are breeds that are named after type, Shepherd, Terrier. Okay. Where does the word I, boxer come I from? I understand where you're going with this. Now, um, Boxer is called a boxer not because he uses his balls. Right, which is a misconception. Boxer. It's a completely a misconception. What the, what the dog tends to do is, he tends to push you with his nose or with his head and he butts you with his head. And he's uh, more of a uh, sportsman kind of a thing. So that's why they, they called this a boxer. Initially, the breed, as you know, is coming from Germany. And... Uh, it was uh, the ancestors of the breed was all over the place. I mean, it was in Spain and it was in England and it was all over the place. But it was developed in Germany as well. And yes. uh, that's how the name boxer comes in because it tends to butt you with his head and with his mouth. Right. So there are breed enthusiasts I see here already. There is uh, Vikram Varma and there is uh, our old friend Sita Ram. You remember Sita Ram from Bangalore? Yeah, he used yeah, to show Labrador. Hello, Mr. Sita Ram. Hello, sir. How are you? And, uh, you know, there are people who are breed enthusiasts who carry this misconception on that it's a boxer because it uses its front paws. But as Mokul has clarified, it's the nature, the sportsman-like traits of the breed and that it keeps butting you with its head around yes. 
that is the reason why it gets the name boxer and not because it uses its two front paws like for punching oh, okay mukul tell us uh, it's a man made breed so sure. and so what are the breeds that went into making this and what traits has this breed picked up from which other breed all right now we are, we, we have to go really back a few centuries uh, in 1700s there was uh, Uh, there was there was a a dog which was known as Barbant, and uh, in Germany there was also a breed called Bullenweisers. Now Bullenweisers was not they, it was not a uniform kind of a size in Bullenweisers. They used to come in two three different sizes: the big size ones, the middle size ones, and the smaller size ones. Right. Now what was a Bullenweiser? Bullenweiser was um, a heavy headed dog with a wide Skull, very athletic, right. Very short coupled, right. Now you you will you will get a, you will get a picture of this uh, the conformation of the dog when I tell you that short coated, right. Short coated animal. It generally came in fawn or brown colors, right. Just uh, sorry, yeah. Just for our pet parents and the not so uh, experienced people, when Mukul uses the word short coupling. He's talking yeah. of the conformation. He's talking of the length of body. He's talking right. of the distance between the forearm structure, that is the front assembly, and the rear assembly. That's right. So the coupling is the distance between the two assemblies, and it it should not be like a dog should. So that's not a short coupled dog, whereas a boxer is a short coupled dog, just in layman terms. Yeah. Well, it happens to us all us judges who who talk in technical terms. What I understand where you're going with this. So well, let's go back to the breed. So, and this this dog was made for the purpose. Initially, was the purpose was for hunting. Yes. I mean, whether it was used for bull baiting or it was left in the forest to catch bears or whatever it is. And the idea was that they would go after the game and catch them from behind. Right. Catch them from behind till the owners came and and did what they had to do. Right. So that's why these breeds were made. Now, this this boxer was from the smaller bullen biter. Okay. For the simple reason, the biggest bullen biter, because there was a size differentiation between the three. Right. The bigger one, you can see in the modern mastiffs. The bull mastiff, for example. Or English mastiff. Or the English so mastiff. That, okay. That, that's the bigger bullen biter was used for that. Right. Uh, The, the the biggest one of the lot was used uh, mi- mixed with hounds like the deer hounds and uh, wolf hounds. Right. And uh, there came in uh, the great dens. Oh, okay. Right. You see, and and the smaller ones were used to bring in our boxers. So this is how the breed was developed over a period of time. And then the colors changed because the with the advent of uh, bulldogs into Germany, which were used into boxers and We t- we just started getting the the white shades into the boxer and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I understand. So that's, that's how these, this breed was made. And then and from hunting, it changed to protection. It, it changed to police dogs. I mean, one of the first dogs to be used in the Germany for police work was a boxer. And that's and you feel it's of steady temperament, that's steady true. enough very, to be. Very, uh, see, they work very hard on the temperament. It's a very biddable. You can tractable dog, which you can teach everything and. Uh, Very friendly to the family, very protective to the family, even to the children. So that's a point my pet parent friends must know. All this talk about the boxer just because of its appearance, not being good for the family, is a myth. It needs to be dispelled. It is as good a family pet as your Labrador or your Golden Retriever. Am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And we've had them as family pets. Yes. So we must note this point. So they're they're very very friendly dogs. So I don't think uh, any pet parent who's, who's thinking of keeping a boxer don't go on the looks. He exactly. looks a little, you know, uh, ferocious, ferocious. Dog, as as you might want to call it. But that's that's the look. He's a very friendly dog and uh, and a great family pet. He can be done. Yeah, I, outside the ring, Muhammad Ali was the sweetest man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. right. Unless provoked. I mean, that happens with all the breeds. I mean, you can pick up a street dog and. If it's provoked, he will he will do the the same thing. Or for that matter, a small Shih Tzu or a Lhasa. Right. They're, they're they're the cutest looking dogs. Once provoked, they will act the same way. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's just the protective angle which comes in. 
so a good takeaway today my friends is that it's as biddable as trainable and as lovable a pet as any of the gun dogs so this misconception we must dispel and all boxer lovers must work together now to make this as much of a family pet as the other that's true hello francis our friend francis is here from argentina oshi hi francis hope you doing well yeah and anjali says silvester stallon is as sweet a man as mohammed ali outside yeah, the ring absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> trust my wife to say that okay <laughs> so uh, let's carry on yeah. so we uh, got this dog which was bred for a particular purpose yes and then you know we used the natural colors of the reds and the fawns right and we got the present day boxer right and how do you uh, uh, you know how do how do we understand the movement of the boxer from europe to other parts of the world when did it happen you see the point is how oh, when did this happen okay now this this advent of uh, boxer going from germany into the us or the other countries it, it all falls up on one person which i think is a very important person in germany at that time because if you remember correctly there were wars yes world wars and all that and most of the breeds went down at that time because yes. nobody had time for the dogs right. but there were these pillars of the breeds who saved these breeds and one of the main pillar of the breed at that time was frau stockman right von dom kennel so uh, she had she had a, she had bred a whole lot of dogs and she kept on holding on to these dogs and she did a great work on these dogs and and four of her dogs even went to uh, which are known as the four horsemen right and this is this is a book this is a book which is written by uh Frau Stockmann which is is a, is a bible but if anybody is really interested in the history and wants to know about boxers where they came from what it is this is the book to get because she talks a lot of sense about boxers and a lot of things about her dogs what you can see what the boxers look like in 1891 thing 1700 you can even see what a bullandizer looks like so you will get an idea what the boxers were this is the book to get and you will get to see all that it's it's one of my bibles in my library i'll just uh, bring it closer to the camera i have put the name onto the comments it says my life with boxers the name of the author is there and here is the new expanded edition so if any of you can lay your hand it's a classic pet book publication if you can see yeah classic pet books yeah so she worked a lot and from her kennels four dogs got into the us okay one was uh, secret then there was uts then there was lustig and there was mary now the thing is that uh, all these dogs were connected one was a son one was a grandson and stuff like that now these dogs are known as the four horsemen of the united states they went to the us all this breeding was done and at that time there was a lot of not only at that time even now the dogs are being imported into different countries and being used for their quality and the modern boxer has been established very strongly all over the world because of that so frau stockman did a great job and she was alive to the 70s and 1970s and uh, i'm sorry that so she did she did she did a great job in this and i i personally feel that uh, anybody who goes who thinks about boxers then talks out about boxers uh thinks of uh, frau stockman as as the mother of all uh, boxers because she 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 worked so hard on this with her husband philip stockman and and their famous uh, von dom kennels so this is where it came from this is where it all distributed in different countries the styles changed when they went to different countries like the crop tails and 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 the crop tails and and I really feel you need to be a little closer oh, and a little know. louder a little louder yeah okay i'm coming a little closer as long as i fit on the screen i guess <laughs> so uh so this is this is what uh, the contribution of of the stocksman is in in the boxers that's okay. where they came from so a piece of advice because both of us do this kind of a chat regularly on various breeds sitting in each other's living room <laughs> yes but that let me admit publicly those chats are a little unparliamentary because we uh, tend to speak our minds more than we will speak today but nevertheless the yes. fact is that you know the bottom line is for boxer enthusiasts 
he has given you the name of the book that will set you on the path to understand the breed absolutely absolutely you can get a book that will tell you about show dogs or dog keeping but to understand where the breed was bred yes how it came about what traits and characteristics were we looking for when we were breeding <coughs> this that is what this book will tell you so go ahead and get your hands on it and try and get some reading that's right oh our friend uh, Chakriti is the four back is from Mauritius. He's he's basically from India, but he's enjoying a holiday in Mauritius. I think. All right. You're most welcome for the live, and it's good to see you here. Okay, so let's move on, Mukul. Yeah. So, um, one thing you know, which most people are often confused about, and I want you to tell to tell them, we read Boxer is a medium sized dog. Okay. Now, what is medium size? <laughs> Okay, uh, there, there is, uh, there is, as you know, and I think I, most enthusiasts do know that there's a standard laid down. Absolutely. There's a standard laid down by American Kennel Club, the FCI, and the British Kennel Club, and there's a, there's a complete standard. And there's not much deviation from the standard. They're very similar. It's just what we interpret from them. So when they say medium size, medium size, a uh, good size uh, boxer is 24 inches at the width, which is the, uh, which is the which is uh, also known as the shoulders on the top of the shoulders yeah. and uh, 25 inches and it can go up to 26 inches. Now, the main thing is that the dog can be big or small or medium as long as he's balanced. Right. Completely balanced. I mean, nothing is exaggerated. Everything is in the right space, place and it makes him use or uh, work with the maximum proficiency with the least amount of energy spent. Right. Is the dog you want? Yes, because it's basically a working dog, and you don't want wasting of right. any energy. Yes, but but there's one thing which is very important in a boxer. Yeah, it is a head breed. Oh, we'll come to that. Yeah, it that, is a head breed. So I know that's your favorite. No I know. I know. So that's the head breed. There's no boxer. Yeah, that that's his favorite topic, which we'll come to a little in a little while. But we'll do the general things first. Yeah, and then we'll come to the specifics, uh, Mr. Mahansura. Hello, good evening. Hello, Yogeshi. How are you? Very nice to have Hi, you Yugeshi. here. Okay, so tell me, uh, we have discussed the origin, we've discussed Germany, we've discussed colors, mm -hmm. uh, we've discussed a bit of temperament. Right. Is it easy to have a boxer in an apartment? Everybody's favorite question. I have a three bedroom apartment, can I have a boxer? Well, Vis-a-vis uh, -vis a Labrador or a Golden Retriever or any other breed. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You can. That, that, let me just switch this off. I, I have kept boxes in my house uh, for, for years and years, though I had a yard, but my boxes used to stay inside with me, inside yes. the house. Yes. And uh, as long as they tend to, uh, you can take them out of play and you can uh, uh, make them spend their energy, Yes. everything is fine. And, and they're great dogs. They love to sit by you and watch you do what you do. And there's not a better side than to see a boxer looking at you. Is it your experience, local? Because it's been my experience. I've had uh, the boxer which you got mm -hmm. from US for us. And he was my bedroom dog, as right next to my bed and often on the bed. Is it your experience that boxer puppies and boxer adults mm -hmm. are less destructive than other breeds? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think so. I think uh, he can be destructive. If he, you, you don't channel his energy. Yes. That's very important. And the other thing which he thrives on is your attention. Absolutely. How much time can you give him? Yeah. You know, it's like, it's, a, it's like a child. I mean, if you, if you, your child gets to spend time with him, he's happy. Otherwise, he throws tantrums. You've yeah. seen a human kid does doing that? Yeah. Same with him. He'll do the same thing. He will try to get your attention yeah. by looking at you or doing his antics. If he doesn't get things, he will tear up his mattress. He'll tear up your shoes, whatever he can get hold of. Till he gets, and what is he doing? He's doing nothing. He's trying to get your attention. Right. So he needs pampering. He's, little, he's like a little child. You pamper him, you look after him, you give him enough exercise according to his age. Right. Not overdo it. Don't overdo it. Yeah. You overdo it and you're in trouble. Right. So you give him just the, as much as he can play around with. Right. 
And once he sits down, when he's when, when he's lying down, bring him home. Right. Or bring him. Uh, just stop playing with him. Let him rest. Right. Because as all kids and as all puppies, he needs a lot of rest time. So that's the time they're growing. Right. He needs to sleep. Okay. Which brings me to another question, which we get from pet parents and general public very often. It's a brachyphyletic breed. Yeah. I know. How difficult is it to have? what generally is commonly called snub nose dogs in delhi kind of weather in hot weather i don't think there should be much of a problem with uh, uh, whether you got mesocephalic as you call it or dolichocephalic or, or brachycephalic it's, it's it does very different uh, make a difference but yes because the nasal passage is made in such a way that there's a few curves in it yes so they have a bit of a breathing difficulty in a sense that they can they can have stress in the heat yes heat stress yes. but if you if, if anybody who's uh, who's using it only as a pet dog and he's sitting at home in the air conditioner in the hot climate yes. then one has to be very careful that you don't take him out in the very hot weather and um, to otherwise you get heat strokes so you have to be very careful with him but we've got the problems we've got a friend sue mp from south africa hello oh. sue nice to see you here hi sue good to see you good to see you a oh, god of right. little wants to know yes sir in comparison which are the breeds that are not suitable for apartment living great any, dane any great well if you want to keep one great dane in an apartment i'm fine with it i can look after it i don't know about it's up to your capabilities for some people even a little shinto is not good enough for the park then for some uh, even saying bernard the fine yeah so it's, it's up to you but it's, yes of course if you have space for a dog it's much better that way. yeah so basically got uh, in answer to your question it's how much of time and space you can give to your pet uh, if you have you know half an hour extra and you're letting the dog out and he's playing and coming back then the apartment doesn't really bother him he'll find his corner and he won't bother you absolutely but you know you can have a beagle in a four bedroom apartment and he's still creating a ruckus every minute because he's not getting any vent for his energy So it's how much of time and attention you give to your pet that really matters Absolutely. on which is the perfect uh, animal for an apartment. Okay, so uh, now my next question. You said that we've got basically reds and fawns, which brought the present-day boxer. Even the brindle. Yeah. Now, can you tell us what exactly a brindle is? <laughs> brindle is brindling. It's basically it's a technical term, but it's a it's a fawn light fawn to dark fawn or or as as in a layman's language brown color yes with with uneven stripes of black black so that's what a brindling is okay so, so uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, yeah, for, for for benefit of explanation that is a brindle dog and okay. i and i'm taking permission uh, you know while i'm showing this this belongs to my friend mr sham mehta so i'm taking his permission to show his dog but uh, this is what a brindle is Correct. and uh, it's basically the stripe of black that overlay uh, a, a fawn background and and the degree or the color of the base determines on whether it's a light brindle or a dark dark brindle that's right uh, is it uh, that a brindle will always produce a brindle well It depends on the blood lines at the back. Okay. What is at the back? But generally, the brindle to brindle will bring you a brindle. That's what I have seen. It can bring a phone also. It can. They can be a throwback, but most of the times you will get the same. That's why people, uh, breeders who want both the colors, will generally cross a different colored parent. Right. A plain, a phone parent with a brindle parent. Right. So they can have both the colors in. Right. That's how it goes. Okay. I'm moving on to a little bit of a technical term. Yeah. Now, now we hear this very special term in boxers, which is called socks. That's right. It's called flash. Mm -hmm. Now, what exactly do people mean? You know, a, a, a normal pet parent goes to the market. He's looking for a boxer puppy. They'll show him two puppies. They'll say, "This is a little plain. Mm -hmm. This is cheaper. This one has a lot of flash. This is more expensive." Does it have any impact on the quality of the dog? What not, is it? Not, not at all. Not at all. This is just <laughs> this is just created uh, artificially 
uh, the the demand for a flashy dog. Flashy dog means that he has got a uh, uh, little bit of white on his paws or feet or three fourth of his leg or half his leg is white, and he would have a collar, white collar, half a white collar. Uh, there's no white on the on the body as such, but uh, the socks, which are the lower parts of the legs, are white. So and it, it detracts from a plain color. So, but it did from nowhere. Does the quality of the dog change? Exactly. And even I'll go one step ahead to say that when you're in the show and you're judging, it doesn't really matter. It's the same thing. So a lot of my friends have asked us this, and I want this to be. Hello, Sujit. Nice to have you here. Sujit uh, has a lot of boxers, and we've had the pleasure of judging some of his dogs. So nice to have you in this session. So this is a very important takeaway which Mukul has given, and the normal exhibitor who is wary of buying a fawn, a plain fawn puppy or a plain brindle, I have often seen people sacrificing a better puppy for a more flashy one. Here is a specialist breeder, a specialist judge, telling you that when a judge is in the ring. His eyes are not focusing on the flash. Not at all. Not at all. They are focusing on the overall quality of the dog. So, my friends who are getting into boxers for breathing and showing, please don't be misled by flash. Deep Singh Arora says, "Yes, I will also. I was also clueless why all choose flashy over plain or Brindle. I I agree with you, Deep Singh. It's just fashion. It's fashion. It's just fashion. Nothing else. It's fashion, and and because uh, you know, uh, let me blow the judge's trumpet. <laughs> it's more attractive for a common person to see the flash. But when the judge is judging a dog, he's not looking at the color. No, he's not. Unless the color is, you know, a disqualification as per laid down standards. Yes. Yeah. If he has more than one third of white on the body or anywhere, then it's a disqualification. Then the judge will look at it. Yeah. So Mukul's point, please note it. You won't get it from a better person. The judge is not looking at the flash. The judge is looking at the confirmation, at the temperament, at the movement of the Correct. dog. Don't be misled by this plain flash differentiation. Don't also be misled between fawn and brindle. For the judge, it's the same. It's the same. Sigmund Joseph says, "Hello, sir. In boxers, except white, all other colors are allowed in show. Why not white? While I had personal experience with my boxer long time ago, it was that it was looking good, but not allowed in shows. Why are white not allowed in shows? Well, uh, it's again, again." Uh, uh, Personal choice, but uh, as far as the standards are concerned, they don't allow them because, as as it's been noted, that white team produces a bit of deafness, sometimes blindness, so they try to keep it away. Uh, plus, being a working dog, let's let's face it, any working dog or a police dog or an army dog has to merge with the surroundings. Imagine a, a somebody is guarding at night in, in some some area and he's got a white dog. You'll see from a mile away. So I don't think uh, it it is uh, it's sensible to have a white dog. That, that's the only reason. White dogs are very healthy. I, I have had a few in uh, in the litters. When you use flashy dogs like with white and uh, fawn markings, you tend to get a white. You are going to get a white. More chances of getting a white with a flashy breeding than to get it with the plain breeding. So and sometimes it it tends to become like you have a litter of five puppies but three whites. Well, you used very flashy dogs, but it's not a it's not a hard fast rule. It happens, so it's it's not allowed in the standard. That that's why what the reason is. And again, the white portion is coming from the English bulldogs. If you if if I might go ahead and say that, it's not a it's not a color which was uh, supposed to be there. So we prefer that the least amount of uh, white is there in the specimens. Which is allowed by the standard, which is less than one third, and a good good amount of socks and a bit on the uh, a bit on the neck is is what it does because it detracts from the main all fawn dog or, or a dog with a fawn or a white. Mask. Imagine a dog a boxer with a white mask. Doesn't look good at all. Yeah, it just, it just takes away from the expression. It expression just it, it just doesn't give you the the expression which you need. 
but having said that uh, uh Sajan, i would like to tell you that as far as the american kennel club the akc is concerned they are allowing breeding from white oh yes you can you can i mean even i mean why america you can breed your white dog because they registered you can uh, use a white dog in your breeding and you will get normal color dogs you will get normal color dogs no because there is there's no uh, problem the only thing is that you might get more than one third white right and eradicating that might take you longer than usual yes so that is the only thing now that we are at this point of breeding how easy is it to breed boxers as easy as breeding a labrador not a problem i have had personally many litters of boxers i have never had these often quoted problems one milk problem i was no. hoping that you know my dear friend steve would be joining in this session but i don't see him here uh toxic milk syndrome many people feel that boxers are more prone to toxic milk syndrome at the time of breeding many people feel that boxers are more prone to cleft palates at the time of breeding mm -hmm. some american lines we've heard complaints of uh, single testicles correct so uh, my experience and mukul will of course have his own thing to say is that it's just as much as any other breed absolutely so yes we uh, you see cleft palate used to be a huge amount of a problem once upon a time long time ago it's not there in most of the dogs now we don't tend to see that because i think uh, uh, the, uh, we have identified few of the lines where it used to come through so they have been eliminated from the breeding programs So you're not getting those craft planets as much as we we could get. Right. As far as cryptocytism or monocytosis, which is a single testicle or no testicle, that tends to creep up. But again, it tends to only creep up uh, generally increase in, uh, in in the ratio. The ratio increases only when you are doing a very close breeding. Right. Close relative breeding that not only affects the testicle part but the size part. Right. Which I have seen happening. But again, uh, I I think that should be left to the professionals, the uh, the close breeding, because that tends to produce champions too, because it 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 concentrates the good traits or the bad traits of the specimen, and then should be left to professional. Ruhi Kulkarni wants to know again. We've said this, Ruhi, but we'll say it again. Yes, boxers are a good option for people with kids below five years. Oh, they're excellent. They are loving. They don't harm anybody. They're excellent. They're absolutely fine. So. Dispel this myth, shatter the myth, and they they take a lot of lot of punishment in the hands of the kids because the children can be rough, boisterous. They can twist their ears, and the boxer will take it all. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Yogesh wants to know, Mukul. Yes. For the benefit of novice owners and readers, can they adopt some ways to minimize albinos in their breeding? Well. <sighs> it's like pot luck you know you what you bringing to the table that's what you're going to get so uh, basically what's happening here you guys is that when people are breeding two dogs what are they doing they're looking at there's one set of uh, one set of uh, breeders which are the show people the one set of people who got pet homes and they got one bitch and uh, uh, they want to use one of the good dog good good looking dog uh, and they go and use a good healthy dog now what places you have to have when you do a breeding you have to do your homework if everybody goes and does the homework before buying a car i wonder why they don't do it when they were going to buy a dog so anybody tells them anything they go and use it but if you go to the pedigrees of those dogs and see what kind of whites they do or what the litters did what you you can minimize it you can not eliminate it that's not happening because the bulldog is there in the genes because it was Got him to give those traits, so it's going to keep cropping up, but it can be minimized. It cannot be eliminated, so that's a no-no. Okay, so um, I'll take liberty now to move slightly uh, into more technical details, which a lot of our viewers would be waiting. Uh, uh, Sandeep, the health issues uh, are basically that uh, you know are most of most of the health issues are the same. uh there are some reports in the us uh, mukul would tell us on the heart condition in boxers that's right, that's right. they do tend to suffer from uh heart heart problems uh but again there are lines which do so we tend to avoid those lines 
uh, generally there is a uh, you 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 get a certificate like like you get for hip dysplasia in in the in the breeding of the parents and stuff like that the same way you get the heart thing also uh, and uh, then you can eliminate those lines and you are you're going to be safe it's like the german chaps get this nose breed of hemophilia it's the same way a uh, boxer does have this problem he has a problem of a bit of uh, dysplasia hip dysplasia also so but it can be all avoided if you do not use those lines and i think to abroad to to a lot of uh, what i am seeing is that they have they have improved upon it and you are hardly getting any of those cases anymore but in india we have to do all that genetical things and stuff like that so it takes some time it can be fixed okay one more thing which i want mukul to answer because he's had uh, bulldogs he was one of the first to import some top quality bulldogs from the united kingdom and uh, pugs and bulldogs and boxers are they easy to live with in terms of passing flatulence <laughs> i know it's yeah. a it's a light hearted <laughs> question but it's a problem yes it's a problem uh, the easiest of the three is the boxer you will not have so much of a problem as you would have with a bulldog it's difficult it is really really difficult especially if you got an air conditioned car and he's going traveling with you you're in trouble the other thing which they tend to do is snore they love to snore but so do i so i can i can take that so that's not much of a problem so passing flatulence yes it is a negative as far as these three breeds are concerned <laughs> but least of the three is the box box yes okay moving on to some technical areas where mukul uh, Uh, is uh, you know that's what we called him for you said so it's a head breed yeah it's a head breed what do you want to people to understand okay now <laughs> first thing is that when you look at the boxer yeah it should look like a boxer it's very important yes and for that at in 1911 or 1895 they were they have laid down these the head studies and stuff like that and there was a silhouette which uh, is known as the munich silhouette yeah. a silhouette uh, for easy understanding is a profile a sketch and outline correct so in that and according to the standard this if the head has if you divide the head in three parts okay from from the occiput to all the way to the tip of the nose okay If you divide it in three parts, right, the muzzle should be only one third of that. Okay, so now carefully we are reiterating. What the web is telling us: silhouette, divide head in three parts. Occiput is the top of the skull till the tip of the nose. Divide it in three parts. The muzzle, yeah. sir. How do you define? Tip of the nose to the stop. Tip of the nose to the point where. The identification between the two eyes. Absolutely, the identification between the two eyes. That portion only is one the third. muzzle, and it should be one third of the three-part box. That's right. So when people come into the ring and we hold the head of the dog in our hands, yes. we are actually looking at these ratios. Absolutely. We are looking at where the eyes are placed, where etc. 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 That is why he wants. Uh, to say it's a head breed you put off the judge in that first instance that's the end of the game now the second part is the width there's a width to the skull and there's a width to the muzzle the mu muzzle width should be 2/3 of the width of the head now i'll read to it <laughs> part 1 a skull occiput to tip of nose three parts Identification to tip of nose is one third of the three parts. Second part of the head, which skull? Skull is the two spots between the ears. That's right. The inside of the ear, not the outside. So the width between the inside of the ears and the width of the muzzle, the muzzle should be two third the width of the skull. Two third the width of the skull. I know we are getting technical, but then that's why we have this event. Yes, yeah, so that will show you a nice broad muzzle, which is very important for the breed. Why? Because if you look at the dentition of the breed, it's an undershot breed. 
Now, when I say undershock, it means that the lower jaw or the lower teeth are slightly ahead of the upper teeth. When I say slightly, it means that there should be a gap of only the width of a pencil. That's it. One pencil, not more. Not more. You will see a lot of them like this. You will see touching. No, it has to be a width, at least a, or maximum the width of a pencil. Now, the second part, the front teeth, the six, six incisors in the front, in the bottom jaw, should be in a, as straight a line as possible. If they are in, in a straight line, then you will get the breadth. Then only you'll go towards the two third of the, the skull. Otherwise, if you've got a rounded jaw at the bottom, it will become narrow. So if you, get, if you get a narrow jaw, then you're not getting the strength of the jaw. What is it needed for a bull baiting? To hold on to a dog or to an animal and keep holding on. That only happens when the dog has strength of the jaw. So that only happens when there's a width of the blow of jaw. Now, the nose part. The tip of the nose is always higher than the root of the nose. Note it, ladies and gentlemen. These are words of wisdom. You won't get them again. Two words here. Tip of the nose. Root of the nose. Yes. The tip is higher than the root of the nose. But there's a reasoning behind it. There's, all things have been made scientifically. I'll tell you each one of them. Then, hardly any wrinkles on the forehead. Yes, very important. Hardly any wrinkles. You see a boxers, oh, a whole lot of wrinkles. Not correct. Absolutely thing, plain. There should be a slight rise in the skull. Not flat. Because that slight rise gives the good look. And there is a furrow here. In between. The skull. Now, what is the reason that this nose is tipping upwards? So when the dog, and there are two wrinkles on the side of the muscles, just two wrinkles on the side of the muscle coming down. Both these things are when the dog catches on to a prey, there's bleeding. Now listen to this very carefully. When this bleeds, there's blood running. Can you imagine the blood is running his face? He's got blood all his nostrils, he can't breathe, but his nose is going backwards. So it is not going into the nose. If, if it's coming onto his muzzle, it will go down these wrinkles in the thing and go down. It's not coming in his mouth. So there was a reason behind everything. Why these wrinkles were made and, and why they were placed like that. So it's very, very important that it is done like that. So this is why it is. Then the chin, the bottom of the chin. There has to be a chin which, can be, which is discernible from each side when you're looking from each side and from the front. So which is also known as an upturn. So, Box is a head breed, and he has to have eyes, which is again very important. I have seen a lot of boxers, especially in the Indian rings, which have eyes placed sideways. Like, uh, a lot like a jump shepherd, or a lot like a devil. No, these dogs, are, eyes are facing forward. That gives the breath. It's very important to see, see these things. Yeah. Root of the nose lower than tip of the nose. Two wrinkles going down. Simple explanation, he is baiting, he is catching an animal. When you, you, if you put it up, share up, see the chin. You can see the chin from the front. There's a chin going there. You should be able to see the chin. It's very important to look at the breadth of the lower jaw. There's enough breadth there because the inside of a straight line in the jaw. So now, for the layman again, uh, a dog has 42 teeth. And when he's using the word incisor, they are, sorry for this demonstration, but they are the same as ours. Yes. Are, are, these teeth are also called incisors. So the teeth between the canines, both in the upper jaw and in the lower jaw, six each are the incisors. Correct. When you get width, as Mr. Vaid has explained, in the lower incisors in a straight line, you get the width of the jaw. That's right. You concave it, the width of the jaw reduces. Simple. So choosing a boxer, choosing a puppy, try to find one which has six incisors as much in a straight line as possible. That is more on the head, sir, please. Yes. So, so, so. And, okay, now the other thing which you talk about is the padding of the lips and the depth of the lips. How much should they hang? 
what should they look like they should be only hanging as much as the front lip bottom front lip so that it covers it they sh they should not be too thick a pad it should be enough loose we call this loose at the side of the lips so there should be enough hang there but not too deep that they like any like a, 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 a bloodhound or, or some other other breed so the whole thing has to be very harmonious looking a very harmonious looking dog so that's why it's called a head breed i mean if you did not have a head if you had a weak head if you have a very good body it's of no use because then it's not a boxer you see a boxer silhouette if you take the head off if i just don't color it i don't give you a picture a boxer silhouette and a doberman silhouette very similar yes There's not much of a difference yes it's except the head part yes you change the heads in it could be any one of those breeds yes so there you go and, and one is brachycephalic and one is dolichocephalic yes. completely different heads yes so that's how uh, we and box and most of the brachycephalic are square, head breeds and both square and both medium size yes and both working both working both need the same extension both need the same thrust absolutely very similar so breeds totally different from the head absolutely so yeah wonderful point absolutely absolutely, absolutely wonderful so okay now many times mukul and me has discussed while we have come back from a dog show having judged a few boxers and we've sat and discussed and said did you look at the eyes on that dog now why are we wanting forward looking eyes so you can see you yeah that precisely so you can see you <laughs> that's why they see the the couple of things involved here they 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 are not slant eyed they are not narrow eyes they are not round eyes like a palm but they are pear shaped eyes yes and they look directly at you and if a boxer looks at you it looks like he's peering at your soul yes that's that's the image which he gives you now most of these brachys are like because of the width of the face because they want the width of the face have forward placed eyes yes. you cannot have side placed uh, uh, obliquely placed eyes on a dog which is uh, which is narrow headed absolutely or a hound or a deer hound or for that matter a saluki or 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 any one of those kind of things right so he he looks at you directly and whole lot of times you will see boxers in the ring which do not have forward placed eyes there's two they are two wide apart two wide apart and then they set obliquely yes so it it changes uh, the expression. expression it completely changes absolutely Uh, absolutely. Oh, our dear friend Sujit is here. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Sujit. Please tell us which is the most perfect boxer you have judged in India. Mine. <laughs> no, he never judged mine. <laughs> Please tell us, sir. Ah, uh, we have. I have judged. Uh, I think I have judged a few dogs in India. And uh, today it would be a little unfair to take a name of any one of these dogs because I have been judging for a long time. I have a few favorites, and. Uh, I think the dog show results tell them all. Okay. That's a very here. smart answer. He <laughs> says the dog show. Hello, Sujit. Uh, Steve, he says the dog show results tell him say it all wherever he is judged and placed the boxer. That's the one he likes the most. I, I had a I had a lovely boxer which was uh, Bob's International Traveling Man. I think so, I think uh, Steve wants to hear that name also. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, fortunately, unfortunately, during one of the times in my life i could not keep him so he went to a very dear friend of mine and uh, i thought he was one of the great great boxers in india great producer to great producer to son of a great dog he was reflection of breaker uh, i'm thinking he was from the united states a great dog so he he did well for himself and it, i think he did well for steel too so <laughs> i i have a dog uh, sorry for the interruption i have an interesting <laughs> question from deep singh arora Is it okay to have eight incisors on the upper and six in the lower jaw? Huh. Okay. Now the boxer head, because it's man-made. Don't be surprised if you get instead of six, you got seven incisors. Yes. Even eight, you will get them. Not to be faulted, not to be penalized by any stand, uh, uh, reasoning, because it's all fine. Because it's a man-made breed. You you have six, you can have seven. Some have eight. It's it's one of those things. It's Some some even have very tiny little peaks at the bottom. Yeah, because the gums get pulled. So it's it's one of those things. Okay, uh, Sujit wants to know white horn. 
is it a faulty tray okay now uh, very interesting cause ladies and gentlemen is the color of the inside of the eye which is visible if the rims of the eye are loose okay very interesting question sujit and i am glad you brought it up now, there are two things in all of this one is holes and the other thing is called nictating membrane of the eye now the nictating membrane is generally of dark brown color or or as you as a layman calls it black if holes are preferred uh, dark holes are preferred and so is the nictating membrane there's a lot of confusion about the nictating membrane a whole lot of people penalize the dog because of that lighter nictating membrane it cannot be penalized holes light holes are not preferred because that means a loose eye ray yeah and it's not preferred and that's not a good eye i would not prefer it but as a judge when i am in the ring i look at the back, complete dog i'm not looking at eye the nose or this or that i'm looking at the complete dog if the complete picture is pleasing and it's the best dog in the ring as far as the balance is concerned that's the dog for you and so i'll explain this to you another Now, another thing which happens with these things is that people abroad it happens are tattooing the holes yes yes so when they tattoo these holes they become dark absolutely so it's all very cosmetic what's going on so it's a cosmetic fault right okay next uh, i have another very important question from rod pella do you think there are a lot of over angulated rare oh, that yeah. are not in balance with the front yes i agree with you he says yes there are there are it's a very simple formula looking at the rears if you draw a line from the rear of the pelvis which is the shin down to the ground a plumb line it should fall in front of the hind feet means the hind paws so if a straight line is drawn from the hgm to the ground it should be just touching the the front of the, the toe. Hind toe if you are if you and and horse being absolutely perpendicular to the uh, ox being perpendicular to the, to the ground now if you are pulling it back in the the perpendicular horse comes 3 inches back is over angled Okay, Anjali, have, can you hear us now? I I understand that we our voice was lost, but I have uh, come back. I presume you can hear us now. And my apologies for uh, the mic going off. So uh, I'll reiterate what Mr. Vaidya just told us. You drop a plumb line from the ischium down to the ground. Given that the hock is perpendicular to the ground that's right and that plumb line should fall just in front of the rear toe if you get that then your angulation in the rear that's is correct. correct having said that we must ask mr ved because most people don't understand but i want to ask him so what angle or bend of stifle are you looking for are you looking for a long second thigh are you looking for a short second thigh what are you looking for in a boxer very simple you know there is a front assembly yes and there is a hind assembly yes they should match each other you have a 90 degree angle in the front and that's ideal that's ideal yes but we are going to talk according to the stand okay so if whatever your dog has you should have a very similar one in the hind so it's balanced it's balanced if you got a dog which has got a very acute angle or a obtuse angle the amount of thrust he gives the front should be able to take it take it or he falls or he falls yeah because the the balance is from the front yeah because he stand he stand his uh, gravity is in the front yes so once that is true and then he should be angulated enough in the front so that he has enough reach so that when the thrust comes from the back he can cover the ground yeah if he is over angulated in the back which happens in a lot of boxers here especially in india i see a lot of them over angulated then his hind quarter is not strong enough which generally happens because he's got a long lower thigh precisely my question yes. that is why i asked because he's got a long lower thigh yes so you cannot have a long lower thigh and a short upper thigh and, and they should be in balance they yes. should be very equal so uh, ladies and gentlemen <laughs> when you're looking at your boxer stack or you're looking at pictures of puppies or you're looking at parents from which you want to buy puppies please keep in mind 
that we are looking for confirmation now i say it in every session dog confirmation is a c o n f o r it's not a c o n f i r we are not confirming anything we are confirming that the front angles are in confirmation with the rear angle right. then you get a balanced dog so you don't want an over angulated or exaggerated hind angulation in a boxer right so uh, another important area there has been a lot of change in the world yes. in the fci yes. on cropping and docking correct that's not happened in latin america in the us no. in japan in no. philippines etc yes uh, where do you see uh, these lines how does it impact the expression the head shape etc the cropping i understand now what is happening that in the us and and the american countries the the cropping is 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 the norm absolutely they are the norm and so is the docking of the tail yes but in england and fci countries it's been banned and you know there's a big uh, wave of trying to ban in a lot of other countries basically all it is a cosmetic looking thing okay it does it doesn't add on to anything for the dog except the way he looks right it gives a more alert expression if the ears are up right yes the tail part if it is a long tail tends to knock off things yes if they are in, inside a flat or in a house tends to get hurt because they wag the tail absolutely so and boxer does do a lot of wagging and he does his wagging by his back side but his whole butt moves yes. not only the tail moving yes. his whole butt moves yes. and when it does it tends to hurt he tends to hurt himself and uh, it becomes a big problem because you know it bleeds and stuff like that so docking was was a good idea especially in all these working dogs right it worked cropping as as far as cropping is concerned it is only cosmetic it makes the dog look nice right but what has happened is because of this cropping part in america the ears started getting a lot of movement yes so evolution let's yes. face it so there's a lot of movement the 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 texture of the ears started getting thinner absolutely because the thinner structure stood up uh, much faster then the european uh, structure or the british uh, ear structure uh, the texture the the, lead, the leather is thicker. thicker yeah so what is happening now is this has become thinner at a particular age the dog moves his head because he's using his muscles of the ears and everything it tends to move his ears so you see it's a term we call fly ears yes it tends to pick them up much faster and fly ears stand up much faster so it has been bred into the thing right so it's going to become very difficult because the standard says how the tail uh, the ear should drop down in the dropped ear for it to stay in the way it has to be yeah. so now we have the other problem because now we will have to glue those ears down yes before we had to tape them up now we have to glue them so that's again a problem yeah but yes as as the dog people say that it, it is a cruelty because they have cut a thing and though it's done in general it's easier there is really no need for it that's what people say so it's one of those things so basic takeaway remains that you know as of now in <coughs> india uh, there is no ban on uh, docking or cropping uh and the kennel club of india is accepting dogs which are docked and cropped in well, the show ring there is a movement against it there is a very strong movement yeah. against it and uh, we might see in the years to come that you know we might have boxers like uh, we now have cocker spaniels and rottweilers with their tails yes we might have uh, boxers with their tails and uncropped that's right so it all depends on how things will unfold over a few years okay sir uh we are into one hour and uh, we normally uh, we have a whole world of boxer talk to do but <laughs> it can, uh, go, on it can go on for months but yeah. we are not getting uh, you know uh, extra time we normally end at one hour so i would like to ask you a few uh, like a rapid fire round okay and uh, and uh, that would be interesting for most people uh, mr ved as i said in the beginning is at 25 plus brief and yeah. and and he's been a connoisseur of most and he had the best german shepherds at a point then the best english bulldogs then the best pomeranians 
then the best akitas then the best boxers then the best golden retriever so it's been one after the other so the rapid fire round so yes boxer or labrador <laughs> labrador labrador but we are doing a boxer session boxer boy boxer girl both no 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 boxer boy or boxer girl uh boxer boy has got more presence okay boxer boy has more presence fawn or brindle fawn cropped and cropped cropped you would like to show yourself you would like me to show for you <laughs> that's a little bit of a question 10 years ago i would love to show myself but now i think you will show for me <laughs> So, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, keep uh, we we can always come back if you have more questions in mind. Keep posting it on our site, <laughs> and uh, we will refer them to Mukul, and he will be more than happy to answer these. Uh, it's with great joy that I uh, tell you that we would be having Mr. Ved back with us in about a week's time. We haven't uh, fixed the date yet, but uh, uh, Labradors it will be that we will have uh, him talking to us about. and we uh, hope to have a lot of people uh, tune in and listen to us so from uh, mokul and me and from dog spot uh, stay safe stay at home and uh, look after yourself and thank you for being with us wear a mask guys it's good for you get vaccinated stay safe wear wear a and mukul wear a kind mask. of mask with the boxer see my my mask is for the boxer so wear a boxer mask so <laughs> thank you, thank you ladies and gentlemen it was a pleasure and uh, thank you dog spot take care thanks bye Bye bye